don't know. It's, <laughs> it's done, I have a sink. Is it? Yeah, it's live now. Excellent. Uh, this is Kevin Black from Ireland. Way! Alan Redding. <coughs> uh, check out uh, Real Ale of Britain. Yeah. Um, what are you drinking, Kevin Black? I'm drinking Five Towns Breweries Ashes. Where do you get that from? Beer Hus. Yeah. I'm drinking two beers. I've got Oscar Blues, which also available at Beer House. And Founders, all day IPA, also available at Beer House. Uh, the beer we're opening soon is Noir. Noir. And this oh, is the, Sierra Nevada. This is a 2012 bottle. I've got the 2013. Uh, where did you buy these from? Beer House. American, Yorkshire, all available at one shop. <laughs> Do you know what I've, do you know what I've also got Stuart for tonight? Yorkshire. I've got burnout. <laughs> I thought you had that, have, you, have you had have you had a chance to review that on your channel yet? No, not yet. I was going to, and then I uh, I think you wanted to review it first of all, so <laughs> so I said, all right, I'll leave it. <laughs> I've already had it. Hmm. I've already reviewed it. I know, no, I was going to review it about two or three oh. uh, days before um, Bonfire Night, and I know you and your brother wanted to review it, <laughs> so I said, I'll, I'll leave it. <laughs> so, uh, how's the Five Towns Ashes? Very, very good. Another beer which is completely fully hopped. Um, um, you know, I, I just find this brewery absolutely fantastic. I haven't had the pleasure to have cask beer yet, from them, but their bottle beers are out of this world. They really are. This one is a fact, uh, packed full of mosaic hops. Cool. Amazing. Um, where did you go for your ale trail yesterday? Yeah, in through Reading. So some of the nice big um, ale houses. There's uh, Nags Head, yeah. which Stu will go to, and the other one <laughs> called the Ale House, which is... Uh, the, kind of the old Hobgoblin pub. Well, oh, cool. Very, very, and I called into One Witherspoons as well. Uh, very, very, very good. Very good. So had, go. uh, had some Yorkshire beer as well. <laughs> Yorkshire beer gets everywhere. It does. It does indeed. Uh, so, show them the sediment from the Five Towns Ashes beer. So, strange, this is the first time this has happened, but the sediment was actually in the top of the bottle. And you should have heard the hiss as soon as he opened it. So I'm guessing what has happened is in transit. Um, but I've had this beer in my garage upright for the last uh, eight, nine weeks. Yeah. So this is the way, obviously, it's been conditioned at the brewery. Um, but, it, you know, this is the first time I've ever had a bottle. But it tastes fine. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. The only thing, then, is the beer came out a little bit uh, cloudy. Oh, it is. It's like it is. But that doesn't bother me. No, no, no. Very, very good beer. So how, how's, your, how's your one, Stu? The Oscar Blues. It's hard to describe, really. It's, it's real weird. You get like a zinginess from a, uh, like, pink grapefruit. Uh-huh. Um, and it's a weird, like, um... Wet paper, you know, you, 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 you uh, like, you, you, five pound notes and your ten pound notes get wet. Oh, yes, it's got that smell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. I think there's a bit, some foot in it. Uh, the old day IPA, it's a little bit more funkier. Mmm. A little bit more, um, Pine than the other one. Mm. A but, bit of a guava, maybe. Because it's canned, right? 
Do you think um, the freshness comes through of the hops? See, I had canned beer in California, Missouri, uh, Bradford, all over the place, and to be fair, the best canned beer is normally the commercial beer. Hmm. I, mean, I had, I had a American craft canned beer, and I, had, I, had, I didn't drink it, but the commercial stuff just stands at test of time, really. I think, you know, the best um, canned beer I've had so far is from Adnamsbury, their ghost ship. Yeah, solid. That was absolutely, that was perfect. Um, um, I mean, I've had... It's always, that, when I say it, I always buy a four-pack of it. Yeah. And I had it, uh, I managed to buy um, a four-pack for like four pound from River and Booze in Osset. Uh -huh. And even past its date, it was still super oh. It's a super beer. Yeah. To be honest, I'm not I'm not too keen on it in uh, on cask, um, and I think they're bringing out a kegged version of it. But um, yeah. the the canned version and the bottle version is excellent. The canned is definitely the best. Yeah, uh, I mean, to be fair, um, like I said, I'd prefer dr drinking bottles. Um, the can just leaves a, a funny metallic aftertaste yeah, every time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've had it with dark beers. I mean, the only decent canned craft beer I've had was probably from Japan, and that was when I was in California. Um, the Java Stout, um, you can't miss it, it's a brown can with a little logo on. That was really nice as well. Mm. Um, six point resin. Yeah, that just tastes like energy drink. It's just like, really? Knock it back. No good. Because you, you had that at. Um... Oh, you had that the last time you were in America, didn't you? Yeah, Missouri. Um, the resin is really nice, but it's just you could just easily just knock that little can back. And I, I think I knocked about three back in the day. It's just... Yeah, yeah. It's actually in Senate. It's always it's one of them beers is on my hit list to try because I think I think at one stage Dark Star Brewery Brewing mm -hmm. Company they were either selling it or they were going to produce some of it. Um, so. Yeah, but to be fair, I mean, there's enough solid breweries in Yorkshire and London. There's no need to buy all this American beer. No. Well, we buy it just for the sake of oh, it's from America. It's interesting you saying that because Nathaniel from uh, up in Norwich, he was saying on uh, Twitter, on Facebook, that he really needs to start trying a lot of British breweries now because he keeps going for these massive beers from America and stuff. And it's like my thing is it's on your doorstep, you know. Yeah. You gotta you gotta try this stuff. I mean, me and Andrew visited Norwich uh, twice now, and when we're in the area, we always drink locally. Uh, sometimes we even visit lo local breweries. We make that effort of buying local, drinking local. Yeah, that's, that's it. What yeah. Everyone should do when they're in the area. I mean, when I went to the two times I went to America, uh, I went to Mission Brewery in. California, San Diego. Yeah. Uh, you also went to Mothersbury, didn't you? Yeah, great people. Uh, that, 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 as well. that beer sounds, uh, their stuff sounds amazing. Like It is, I mean, uh, everyone was like average to above average. Uh, the favourite one of the trip last year was probably the, uh, the Pumpkin Potter from Mothers. Uh, Which, yeah, that combination of dark beer and you know, the, the you want from a pumpkin beer. Yeah. Very good. <sighs> oh, I went to... And got the t-shirt. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, today. Did you get that from the pub you visited? Yeah. Look, kind good. enough to... They had a t-shirt. It says, oh, there you go. There's a t-shirt. I got oh, a badge in the glass as well. Excellent. Because back in the day, when I, before I started drinking beer, I just collect all these little badges. I've got yep. a coat. Oh, yes. I mean, what were those people back in the day? They used to have old badges all over them. Yeah, that's right. A lot of the camera uh, boys still got them. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, uh, what fears? Uh, what is it? I noticed. Uh, I, I tried phoning you earlier. Um, the Tesco got some Irish beers. Yes. Sorry, I missed your call. Aaron was with me on the sofa. My phone no, no, that's cool. No, I, I, I want to. I was going to buy them, but I want to show. What beers were they? Oh, I should have, you know, when I, I was on a rush because I had to get last bus from where we are, and I forgot to take a picture, but um, I'm sure you can find them on the Tesco's. But um, yeah, the, they had some others from America as well, which I'm not sure who they were. But um, yeah, um, I was surprised because normally when I go into that Tesco's, there's hardly nothing. Hmm. But it looked like a completely new layout. I managed to get some beers, which I think I put on the Facebook. It was uh, inter- it was interesting you said to me about about that about the MRS beers, because the only ones you kind of really get over here are the kind of the bigger breweries, you know what I mean, like yeah. Smittix, Caffrey's, Guinness. Were these in bottles? Yeah, three uh, thirties. I think it was called Phallus or something. Oh, Phallus. That sounds similar to what I saw. There's a there's a brewery which has just opened in well it's been opened about two two years ago and it's just and it's in County Fermanagh. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know to be honest I don't know too much about their beer. Um, actually I've only ever had one pint of it. But that's why that's why I tried to phone you because I, I, you know when you have that sense of don't buy it. What's that? Yeah. Uh, this one here is uh, Dartmoor Brewery. Okay. Legend. So I purchased this in uh, Tesco in um, Bristol in yeah. August time when I was coming back from holidays. Uh, went in and must have spent about 60 quid on beers. <laughs> because it's amazing because you go to the Tesco's and they also do some of the local breweries yeah. as well. Even though this is not really uh, Bristol, like you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean from what I've noticed that if, if you go into a supermarket in the local town, oh, yeah. in the local towns, oh, yeah, it'll be different in every district. Yeah. So you can go to uh, Tesco's in Bristol, say, and then go to um, one in London or one in Yorkshire, and they'll all stop different beers. Oh, yeah, definitely. So how is Erin anyway? Is she okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, she's all good. She has, she's had a bit of a stomach bug for the last two days, so it's and so I had to take today off work to look after. Which is fast asleep in bed now, so <laughs> well, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> was it a day of uh, Peppa Pig Pig then? It was a day of Peppa Pig um, and running about and kind of just lying on the sofa getting big cuddles. So yeah, so it was, it was a nice day too. Don't get me wrong, Ooh. but it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> this is a strange beer shirt. Also. It's like caramel, toffee, um, and then you get this. You know that they're, um, it's like a Christmas drink, that slur, or slur. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We sell it at my work. Yeah, so the, the red grape one, imagine that to put in the bitter. That's what's in this glass. It's strange. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, I mean, um, supermarkets do, do sell some good beers. I mean, uh, the... the Sainsbury's or Tesco's had a lot of Yorkshire beers in. All right. I'm not too keen on it. I don't think I'll buy this all day, all this deal again. It's yeah. just thin. The, the body's just too thin on both of them. I was, I was going to buy the range when because beer uh, houses had them now for since just before the end of the summer. Yeah. They brought them in. Um, and what's it, Sly Fox? See, yeah, I mean, I, I had all the Sly Fox, um, and I, I actually cut my finger on one of them. Oh, did you? Because I went to pull the can, and the entire lid came off and Jeez. slipped. Oh, slipped my finger. Yeah, I had them. Um, I've been lucky to have their beer on keg in London. Yeah. And to be honest, it's oh, it's quite, for me, it's quite watery. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's very thin. David from the beer house said the same thing. He says they're not selling, and basically, no one's buying them. Yeah, I just 
Yeah, it's uh, what I would say to people is you know buy it and try it anyway. You know mm. what I mean? Um, but for me, it was like uh, it was a it was like hops thrown into hot water, um, and there wasn't really a malt base on them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was well, strange. This is no body at all. No. And the Sly Fox ones as well. As soon as you poured them, the head disappeared. Yeah. And uh, and I can I've, I had. I had I've had a couple of cans and I've had was it again on keg, and yeah. it was nah and it was a waste of money. It was six pound a pint. You know what I mean? And I thought yeah. I'll try it. Um, had two halves, so what? So three pound a half. Like I was like, nah, not worth it. Like, I mean, I, I've, when I went to Sparrow, I had um, some ke- keg beers and stuff, like that, and majority of the time it's okay and solid, but sometimes it's just a waste of money. Can't, cool. wait, can't wait to visit that place, Stuart, the Sparrow. <laughs> that is going to be, that will be a session and a half. Yeah, it's yeah. expensive now, you know. It's what? <laughs> it's expensive? Yeah. Drinking fucking thirds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to call into the Grove today in Othersfield. Yeah. Uh, which is probably like your, your pub down there, the uh, Tap, is it? The, the Na- one that's in London? Na- Na- oh, London Brewery. What's that? Uh, Brewer Taps in London. Uh, oh no, the, the 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 beer company, uh, the craft company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. that. Yeah. But in Yorkshire. Apparently, there's another one which is, is it? Is there one that's just open in Leeds? It's got 40, 40 taps. Yeah, I've got the link the other day. Someone invited me to the Facebook page, Taps oh. Brewery, or something. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Sounds so, interesting. I'm guessing that there's no cask beer. Well, you never know. You never know. Yeah, that'll be a that'll be a nice that'll be a nice that be a place to visit. I'd say give it a go, give it a whirly. I mean, uh, one of the places Nathaniel took us, um, the Norwich Tap. Yeah. That was basically uh, it looked like a building site or insurance company. Uh-huh. It had like little taps coming out of the wall. Right. Uh, it, Any fair, good? I probably wouldn't go it again. No atmosphere? No atmosphere. It just sterile. That's what people tell me about Brewdog bars. Yeah. Well, there's one in Leeds. Yeah. And I, I, I went to Leeds Beer Festival. Yeah. And then I went to the, the Brewdog bar. I walked in. And all they had was Brewdog uh, Punk IPA on tap. I think it was like six pounds for an half or something stupid like that. Yeah, fuck it. Um, and I went, I can buy this at Morrison's for um, two pound, yeah. or buy a big bottle, a pint yeah. or something. Yeah, for four fifty. Yeah. Or three pound. I think it was three pound. I saw it in Sainsbury's. Um, why would I pay six pound for a little? I know. So I just turn around, walk back out. It's interesting because, uh, oh, what do you call him? Uh, he lives. He lives. I think he lives in Huddersfield. Um, he does the re- the live review sometimes with a uh, really old guy. Oh, uh, Rob Dabshire. Rob. So yeah, he, um, he lives in Saltaire. He's what? Sorry. He lives in Saltaire, but he passes oh. through. Yeah. Huddersfield. Yeah. Well, he was saying to me when I was coming up, he says, you know. If there's some one place you want to hit to, when you come up and see Stu, make sure you go to Huddersfield. He says that's the place. That's what I tell everybody. That's the beer. That's the beer capital of the world. Yeah, I won't bother going to New York. The only reason New York is for trembling madness. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, but Huddersfield is just brim with uh, real ale pubs uh, and craft beer pubs and such. You can get Nogni on beer on tap in Huddersfield. Yeah. But anyway, Rob was. Did, did, did you see Rob's um, blog about his uh, best beers? No, I didn't know he did one. Uh, uh, the sleep pattern's been a bit erratic lately. Right. So obviously, that's probably why you see all those pictures of uh, one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I obviously, wake up about three, uh, go to work, come home, have my tea about seven. Watch a film, fall asleep, wake up at twelve. So I try and what stay awake longer, but it's, you know it is. 
I mean, That's you, you, it. you have like a 15 hour day over there. Yeah, yeah, I had a, had a, I had a, a, a real stupid day, or a stupid week, should I say. Uh. Um, there was a couple of Fridays ago, I worked 19 and a half hours. <laughs> Shattered. Oh. Listen, Stu, I need to nip upstairs. I think the wee one's crammed. Just burst me. Was... Burst me a wee second. Yeah, <laughs> <sighs> yeah so. I've had this a few times now. Uh, first time, I, I think I probably shared it with my brother, Andrew. Uh, about a few times after that, uh, where I did beer mixes and such. Uh, with Optimum and Torpedo and probably another beer. There's a cap. Yeah, in a... it's right now. Hey! So, are you ready for this in the wild then? Yes, let's go. <laughs> let's crack this bad boy open. BB Bar Fly. Ching! Part of the people. <laughs> Tell the story behind your BB Bar Fly. The story behind my one? Yeah. So, got it probably about nearly about a year and a half ago now. Uh, yeah. And actually, what, what was really, really good is when I originally ordered it, um, about, it was about two days later, uh, I woke up and Brian had sent the print of what it was going to look like. Very, very professional yeah. on the Facebook page. So, I had it at the top of my... Um, oh, bar. Yeah, and it was it, it looked amazing. It arrived about ten days after that. Yeah. But actually, strange. I I I didn't see it right, and um, and I think Erin picked it up and she put it in the bin, and it was in a little brown bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Was and I was like, it was only that I was going out to the bin that I felt this packaging on the side, but it's near the top. Yeah, it rattles. Even open. Yeah, it was like a bubble bag. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what's that opened it? And there it was. Baby <laughs> So what's the name of your baby Buffy? Well, it says Real Little Britain on it. And why does it say that? So because that is what my YouTube name is and for the book I'm writing as well. Well, See? nearly finished. Nearly finished. Just looking at the publisher now. So um, cool. again, it looks good. What I, what I'm doing is I'm getting one for Blackie's Brewery. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, I'm in talk, talks with um, brands, uh, work colleague, just to put a design together now for it, and hopefully yeah. we'll be able. They will actually help me come up with a nice logo as well. Are you brewery as well. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. So, very good. You ready then? So, yeah. So this beer is Noir Imperial Stout, and it. Alcohol level is... 2012. 10 point, yeah, 10.2. And this is the 2013. And this is the 2012. <laughs> what chocolate? Oh, that... I mean, the, the, the good thing about the BB is... No marks on the cap. Yeah. No dents. So any for those ball cap collectors. There you go. Some carbonation. Pouring fizzy cocoa brown yeah. head. Very, very good carbonation. Two finger head there, tightly packed bubbles, Stu. Um Dissipating pretty quickly, quicker than yours, yeah. probably. I've got mine poured in a the Fuller's tulip glass, the the vintage glass they use. Um, it's a big chocolate bomb. Yeah, I mean, there's a little dark roast. There's a... 
Oh, you're getting it's a lovely, a, you're getting a lovely castle. port done on as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there you go. Very good. It disappeared quicker on the 2013 than it is on the 2012 edition. Yeah, amazing. And again, you know, um, I got this. I've had this beer now for about um, six, seven months now, yeah. and, I've, and I've been keeping it for the kind of that come lead up to Christmas. Um, yeah, looks absolutely fantastic. And this has just been released about a couple of weeks back. Yes. I've got one of them ordered just before Christmas, 20th yeah. of December. So nice dark chocolate, a little bit of um, milk chocolate as well. Lovely dark roasted malts. There's a little bit of coffee on the nose. There's some port. Yeah. I'm actually picking up a little bit of hazelnut. Yeah, it's not. I'm getting... It actually yeah. tastes like salt uh, hazelnut coffee pot. Do you know what? It's actually very, very pleasant. I can't get no alcohol at all. I'm also starting to pick up a little bit of oak. There's, yeah, there's, oak. There's, there's a little bit of woodiness to it as well. Oh. There's a dirty charcoal smell. What is fascinating about this 2012 is there seems there's there's a really deep Port note. As you can see, your edge of tension is stuck around, whereas mine is gone. Yeah. And maybe what that is, Stu, maybe there's a lot more, possibly more wheat, which has been used, or maybe the, the conditioning process. Mm. This has been conditioned that little bit longer. It's got little red berries and cola aroma. Yeah, it's, it's it's very, very good. It, for me, it's them big deep port notes, so there's, you know, that big red grape. But not even that. It's leaving this wonderful kind of lacing on the glass. I mean, I think when I had the 2012 last year, um, or earlier this year, it was a little oppy. But this is, since this, around the same time as like last year, it's not as hoppy as last year's. Oh, my good God. But every bottle I had of the 2012 one was solid every time I had it. When I did a beer mix and when I did a um, drank it with my brother. That is that is amazing. Absolutely. And here, there is a hop note to that. Yeah. But do you know what it seems to be? It seems to be the flavour of Cascade. Um. That's probably what it is. Because actually, what you're starting to get in it is um, you're getting a little bit of... There's a little bit of grapefruit and there's a little bit of pineapple. And I think that's where that sweetness is coming from. And then there's these really nice deep port raisin notes. But that's all superseded by them roasted malts. There's coffee. There's that hazelnut, but it's like... It seems to be quite sticky. And then there's really deep molasses, which is just kind of licking the inside of the palate. Very, very good. I should have bought two of these. I bought, I think, about four altogether. <laughs> do you know what, Stuart, do you know what this tastes like? Have you ever tried... Um, oh, I'm getting more port now. Have, have you ever tried Williams Brothers Brewery's... Um, their Nolock, their Christmas beer? No, I think my brother saw it somewhere. Kevin Black. Yeah. Actually, it looks more like me with my beard. <laughs> um, no, what, what, I did, you, what I did what, with this one I've just shook it up just now like, that, like I do in my videos yeah. and poured I, it in and it's, it tastes I, a little bit better now I did that before uh, just uh, halfway through pouring it yeah. but what it's actually tasting like right? it's really starting to taste now like a barley wine which has got most of us absolutely yeah, I'm getting more, more the ones I used mentioned earlier, the pot. Yeah, and 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 they're quite deep flavours, aren't they? Yeah. It reminds me of the one I had last year, but I, I prefer 2012. Oh. It's a little bit more creamy now. You get a little bit of the alcohol. Definitely in this one here, you're, you're getting the alcohol. You know, it's there, and it's actually, it's kind of, 
after the first couple of uh, sips on it, you're mm. getting it. You know, it's you can feel it in the back of the throat going straight down into the stomach. Like it's just that nice warming sensation. You know, this is an imperial stout. If I was drinking this blind, right, I would say it tastes more like uh, a barley wine with what what has chocolate in it. There's a bit of licorice in the bottle. Have you finished your bottle yet? Definitely getting licorice and a bit of a... Uh, maybe sherry. Yeah. Oh, sherry. Right. All, all I'm getting off mine is port. Yeah. Port and big juicy raisins. That's probably what I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little more. What? Oh wow, lost pot there. I mean, what I suggest people to do is basically pour it normally. Yeah. And then, like the uh, effervescence, in, shake it up a bit, and then pour yeah. the rest. Very, very good. Very good. Very deep body. Yeah. Uh, th- this is this is another beer I think would go absolutely fantastic with a little bit of a little slice of chocolate cake, um, or again, vanilla ice cream. Mmm. I mean, the, the one that uh, I've known that works best with vanilla ice cream is the broccoli and black chocolate. Yes, and I, I see Beer House has got that in at the moment as well. Yeah, I mean, you can get, the thing is, I can get it probably pretty cheap, about three quid, I think. Uh, that's three pounds sterling in Ireland. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> or if you go to the uh, site, about five euro. <laughs> I mean, it, the colours on the thing, it does represent a lot of coffee there, as you see on the coating. Yeah, yeah. That that coffee, or a mock, mock, what's what's the one that's a double espresso? Is it macchiato? No, mocha is a mixture of chocolate and coffee. No, the, the, the macchiato is it macchiato? Oh, ma- yeah, 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 it's like, yeah. That's the double espresso. And that's what. It, yeah. This it's very very good. You know, talking about the chocolate, there's that kind of deep, and um, there's dark chocolate and there's milk chocolate on it as well, but the Dutch. Are very very fond of putting creamer in their um, coffee, mm. and actually you're getting that that kind of creamer, uh, kind of silkiness over the chocolate. It's very very good. I'm yeah. very I'm really really impressed. I think this is this one here is one of the best I've had from uh, I mean, from Sierra Nevada. I love their you torpedo. Buy, this did you buy, buy the Optimum from Bay House? Yes. Yeah. You had it yet? I've, I, I drank it. I've reviewed it as well. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought it was a nice beer. I think it was a little bit too sweet. I mean, me and Tom Mulvihill uh, session, sessioned a few of them with um, six point resin. Mm. And, uh, uh, in the videos, all, all Tom does is giggle away, and then I just passed out afterwards. And that was just within like an hour. We drank six point resin and optimum. Yeah, <laughs> I think you know. See that optimum. I would like to. I would like to try optimum on cask. Or no, sorry, on keg. Um, but I mean, Andrew had it in Leeds. Yeah. And we, we had it in Uddersfield as well. On keg. Well, I had it in Uddersfield. On keg. Yeah. I mean, it's, you see, because for me, the bottle version, it was nice. Don't get me wrong, it was good, and I would buy it again. But I mm. think it was just a little bit too sweet. I think there was just too much sugar. The one I had in Optimum I had in America, the bottle, was completely different. It was a little lighter, mm. a little more easier to drink. The one I had in uh, Britain, it just seemed more denser, heavier. Yeah. But I don't know if that was due to the transit. And it just proves that sometimes it's best to drink the beers in the location rather than get it from that location and take it somewhere else. Yeah. Um, Boudoir, Coco, Psycho, would it be as, I'd probably say it was the top 10 of this year. Me and Andrew really enjoyed that and it surprised us. I haven't, I haven't had it yet. But apparently, yeah, everyone says it's a fantastic beer. But I would say, um, to me, this one here is mm. in definitely probably my top 10 of Imperial Stouts, which I've, which I've had in this last year and I've had quite a few Imperial Stouts. Um, but, very, very good. Very good. I, I don't think it's in my top ten. 
the Imperial Stouts only because I've had so many. Uh... Yeah, I think you see one Imperial Stout. I think you need to try, and I keep going on about this. Vibrant Forest Brewery. I've not seen any of their beers pop up on my, my face. They do um, one called Black October. Yeah, and it is fascinating. Stu, I'll, I'll pick you up a bottle because I don't think they I don't think they make it a past. To be honest, I'm very very lucky to get them because sometimes I go to Southampton. So I buy them from a bottle shop down there. There's a brewery Andrew wants to try. Um, it, when you had it your first year as beer reviewing, um, what are they called now? Some Cox, isn't it? Oh, two Cox Brewery? Yeah, Andrew said it. Yes. Andrew said to me of, of a week, you wouldn't mind trying two Cox. Yes. Well, I've got. Well, you know, and I'm, I'm sure he would like two. <laughs> um, but um, it's it's interesting because I I drink their beer quite a bit on cask. Yeah. And it is very, very good. And the bottles, you should see their pint glasses. Their pint glasses, are the, I've never seen anything like it before in my life. All the, yeah, bottles, think... all the bottles come with a cox feather, right? All yeah. The, but the pint glasses have a cox feather right in between the glass. So it's actually sunken into the glass and glassed over. A proper feather? A proper feather. Wow. Amazing. What's this Amazing. So, How does that two cox feather stay erect? Well, well, Stuart, you know, that's... A... <laughs> That's a question you, you must ask the brewers. What I what I do know is the reason they're called two cocks is because the two boys are gay who run the brewery. So I thought it was they're two cocks. Yeah, well they might have two cocks too. <laughs> very, very good. Cool, um, are they the first homosexual brewers in the UK? Or? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure, mate. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and their beer, their beer's solid. Like, um, for me, their best beer by far is their Puritan Stout. Um, yeah. And you know, you come to Reading, come to the beer festival, or you know, it's easy you get it on on cask somewhere. Like, you know, very good beer. I know, but it was like when I watched your beer reviews for the feeling it was like pun after pun after pun. <laughs> I go <like>, no. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when, when me and Andrew reviewed the Norfolk cock from Wagtail Brewery, yeah, we were just pun after pun after pun. Yeah. Oh, here we are in Norfolk, holding some Norfolk cock and all that stuff. <laughs> you, gotta, <laughs> you gotta do it, like you gotta do it. And try to, you always have to be, try and be professional, don't you? At one yeah. point, and it's just like by the end of it, you just burst out laughing. Well, it's interesting because because I know the two guys who brew. Um, yeah. When uh, when they well, so the, the brewery's been up and running now nearly two years. So he doesn't live too far from me. So sometimes what he does is he he calls past the house. I might be out of work, but he leaves maybe a couple of the five liter mini kegs. Okay. And he says, "Try them, Kevin, and 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 tell me what you think." Um, and you know, I remember it was about April. April, March or April time, he came to the house. I was leaving to go to work, and he says, "Kevin, there's, I've got three new beers. There's so there's 15 liters of beer." What? Let me tell you, that was a me- that was a messy week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but but again, you know, very very solid brewery. Um, I think out of all their beers I've had, I've had one which in bottle format just wasn't conditioned right. Everything else was being spot on, um, and. Living in Reading, like you know, it's one of them safe sessional beers. You know, if you see it, I was like, I'll have a pint of that. So yeah, I mean, um, we have a few of those over here, the Salabanda and uh, Salter and such. Yeah, you see, Salter Brewery. That's that is a brewery which I'm really gonna try their beers in 2014. Definitely. Well, um, you should be able to get their beers down there. You are. Well, you can't. Yeah, in the in the ale house you can get, uh, you know, and it's hit and miss when they bring them in. So you might get a cask every eight weeks. But I really want to try their whole bottle range because apparently one of their best ones is a called Kalu or Kalu or I, I Kala. Is that yeah? Well, apparently that is um, one of their one of their best beers. So the, yeah. so, so the Southerners are saying. <laughs> um. It's a real, you can buy it pretty cheap at Beer, Wine and Direct, but you have to actually go to the Beer, Wine and Direct place because they don't do online. And you can get it really cheap, about £2. Oh, really? I, yeah. You know, I thought when I tried their um, triple chocolate stout, I liked it, right? 
but first thing was it was very very thin. Yeah, I, you'll but notice when the bottles that they're all thin on yeah. the body. But then you, you you expect the same thing when you get have a cask. Yeah. Completely different story. Yeah, and that's and that's why I want to try the complete range. I think uh, their beer festivals in September. Oh. Maybe that's something that would be something you'll go to, won't it? You seem to go to that most years. Yeah, um the problem with this year's um I'd gone to, I think it was a beer festival or something, the Friday, and I went to the Saltaire thing, Saltaire Brewery, uh-huh. open day on the Saturday. Yeah. Now, um, I really shouldn't have gone to the thing on the Saturday because I couldn't really remember anything that I drank. So every time Rob Dab, she walked up to me, he goes, what are you drinking, Stuart? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, chat to the the... the the Saltaire clan, the Saltaire Brewery clan, the Horner and that stuff. What are you drinking? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just walking past. I, if I, I had pictures, I would have never known what I drank. I have a, I have a friend in Dublin, right? And yeah. all he ever drinks from that brewery, and he sessions at most nights, he's in Dublin, and there's a there's a bar called The Bank, College Green, yeah. in, in Dublin. Very, very nice beer, uh, beer kind of place. Um, Vote it best bar in Dublin for the last two or three years, mm. but uh, they have the Salterbury beers uh, in bottle format, and every time he goes in there, he drinks the Salter Blonde dry, like, he just says bottle after bottle after bottle after bottle. I bet that's expensive. Um, my, well, my sister, when I was over, my sister had a bottle of the choc- uh, triple chocolate stout, and I think it was five euros, so it was about three fifty a bottle. In Morrison's down here, it's two pound... Yeah, but, but then doubles the thing. Doubles uh, the expensive, if you know what I mean. Yeah, if you go to the shops in the near the brewery, it can cost you the same as what you paid in Dublin. You see, I find it fascinating because you, you know you go to beer house, right? And you know, uh, I said Dave, you know, five, get me all the five time beers you can get, and he has a wee list of the ones I've had. So when he comes in, you he sticks it aside for me. That's and the most, the most expensive beer I've purchased for them was £2.80, and that was one of their specials. The rest of them are something ridiculous, like two twenty five, mm. and it's top quality beer. You know what I mean? Yeah, the thing about beer is it keeps the price low. But and... you, my, my thing is, what he does, right, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, apart from the international beers he brings in, everything else is Yorkshire-based, so there's not much yeah. mileage getting the beers to him. So he can get good prices. So obviously he makes a profit, but at the same time too, us beer beer drinkers and reviewers, we can buy beer from him at a decent price. Well, it, even his um, real ales are cheaper than anywhere else. Um, his craft beers are cheaper than anywhere else. Yeah. Um, it, the, the fact that he keeps them so low, I, I, I've no idea how it is it. Well, he must, he must get good deals. There is um, there is a, a new beer, uh, beer bottle store just opened in Reading. It opens yeah. well. It opens tomorrow. I was in a couple of days ago. Had a little sneak preview. Oh, cool! So, got the whole Colonel range. It's got Weird Beard. It's got Lawton yeah. Brewery. All the locals. You know what I mean? Very very good. So, <laughs> um, if you do. Thing, uh, take the picture of this, the front of the store, and then take a picture of the inside as well. Oh yeah, you know. Well, what I'm going to do is hopefully just before Christmas, I'm going to go go in and do a couple of reviews. And um, I've already bought a case of beer from them. Um, it's like uh, some of the special beers which have kind of been brought out by some of the local breweries. Hmm. I, I think I got twelve bottles of beer for. I think it worked out about twenty eight quid. It was. Um, um, you, but some really done? nice strong beer as well. Have you purchased any rogue beer from I, there? To be honest, I'm not too keen on it, mate. I'm not too keen on rogue beers. Why not even but the funny? Sorry? The funny? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. We've got their Plum Noir and their Banana and Chocolate beer. Oh, no, that Banana and Chocolate one sounds interesting. And I'm actually thinking of making a Banana Stout. Really? Um, but, yeah, I just... Feel, I just find I just find it um I just find their beer strange, you know what I mean. People will probably say that about my beer too. 
<laughs> yeah, I liked uh, Simon Seaton from Armchair Brewery. He, he, he reviewed your beers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Super solid guy. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to trying his Imperial Stout. The only the only thing, right, I don't know why he did this. The only thing is an Imperial Stout, 11%, bottle conditioned. Taking it out with a wine cork is going to be a fucking nightmare. Because there's two things going to, there's either two things is going to happen. It's going to either open perfectly or it's going to spew all over the place. Well, the thing is, I don't know if to review it in the morning, uh, then uh, add, pictures, add pictures throughout the day. Yeah. You know, because you can, you can re-screw it back on, can't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Or you can get them little little um, wine stopper things. You just put it in. Because I think it's got a cork in it yeah. and a, a screw cap. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I, I, I don't know what's underneath. So I'm, I'm, uh, he just said to me, you need a corkscrew to crack it. So, yeah. <laughs> so but, it, um, it, yeah, I think we're doing it Christmas morning. Right. And then doing, uh, I'll upload it probably on Boxing Day or something like that. Yeah, I think what I'm, if I get a chance, what I might do is do it on, if I get a chance, I might do a Christmas night, I think. Or I might take the head stagger and do it tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, me and Andrew's got the Christmas beers for choo- Tuesday. Mm. But the thing is, I, I, I'm doing the little uh, recon on all, all the beers, and they're all about nine percent, and the five hundred mil. There's nothing wrong with that. I had yeah, a really nice, good. I had a really nice beer last night, West Barchers Brewery, and it was called Winter something. Can't remember. It was, and um, but it was their, it was like a winter. Um, Winter warmer. It was yeah. It was West Berkshire Brewery's winter warmer. It was called six percent. Mm. Listen, let me tell you, Stu, I could session it day in day out. What a beer! Um, I think it was my second last beer of the night, and it was like this is absolutely fantastic. So, and that new beer bottle, beer bottle shop had bought two bottles of it anyway. So, looking forward to it over Christmas. Oh, I can't wait to review. And Andrew, Andrew saw your beer in uh, one of the Sainsbury's, I think, or one of the Tesco's. You know the shipyard, not the shipyard, the ship and name beer with, in the box. Really? Twenty pounds or something? No, he he seen it where? Is, is it? He saw it one at supermarkets. He didn't really say. Apparently, it was, what I was told is that beer can only be bought direct from the brewery. No, what he said, he says he saw it, the same thing yeah. in the supermarket. But I, I went to the supermarket today, Tesco's, Sainsbury's. Yeah, no. Yeah. I was told the only place you can buy it is from uh, from Shepherd Name. I've I managed. They sent me one bottle. I must be on like a mailing list for them, right? Mm. Like a lot of the other beer reviewers. So they sent when when new beers come out, they send you some of the review. So I remember getting one bottle about a year and a half ago, and then since I've bought five for myself, and then I bought one for you and one for Amanda. Yeah. Um, but I think, mate, I, I hope you enjoy it because it is the mates of, I love it because I like really I like, really like multi beers and this mm. beer is brewed with five malts, five hops, so you know the me it is and you know, chill it gently and just sit back and the two of you just relax and and skull it like very good beer, very good. I don't I don't know where we're going to open it because I think we were saving it first like when Andrew uh, gets patience for Christmas. Yeah. Oh, just you know, just <laughs> well, you know, you know, you never know. You know, you know. One day you might oh. just the TVs might turn right and say, "Ah, oh, let, let's crack this open." You know, maybe New, New Year's Eve. I don't know what you're doing New Year's Eve or whatever, but yeah. I think uh, when well, Andrew gets sense of humour for Christmas. Oh, sense of humour. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it can be very moody. Stuart, that Noir, what yeah. a beer! What a beer! Very good. I'm taking my time because I've been drinking all day. It's not. If you're a Yorkshire man, I'm an Irish man. <laughs> so right. your next beer to review is. Well, I'm just. I'm going to finish off this pint of legend. Oh yeah, describe the legend. That doesn't. Yeah, you, so that's the one from the Dartmoor. So that's the one toffee tree, uh, toffee caramel, and then half a bottle of red grape slur. Hmm. But in it. So, would I buy it again? I don't think so. Have I seen it? Have I seen yeah, it? it looks such law as well. Doesn't it? 
it's 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 like a deep burnt orange color. You know what I mean? Uh, you can still see the carbonation rise. I'm actually chatting about this today. Um, ale. I don't know when you started drinking real ale. Probably when you were two, because you're Irish. No, I think it was when I was about one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> But um, do you mean you start drinking real ale and you could basically take a sip and half an hour later it be the same sip that you took before? Yes. I So I started drinking ale when I was about 16. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, for me it was like, the first thing was like, fuck, part of my French. It's very, very flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then... Um, and it was only I never really drank it in Belfast. It was only any time I was over in England watching the football. Mm. And then I just kind of acquired a big taste for it. But more so in the last six years that mm. we started living here, I haven't drank anything else. Um, when I first came over, when I first came over, I was drinking. And I, you know, people always say what their guilty pleasure of ma- uh, macro lagers are. I like Cronenberg. You know what I mean? Cronenberg ice cold in a can is fantastic. Um, <laughs> but Apart from that, then I was drinking Hotback Brewery stuff, their entire stout, you know, yeah. Summer Lightning, fantastic beers, you know, top quality. But uh, the thing is, uh, like I said, you could, you could come back to it and you, it'd be the same ale, but we were trying it today, and a lot of the new brewers uh, we've got now is you could take a sip and then you could leave it uh, the same amount of time and it'd be flat, dead. No, no, nothing mm. of a nail. It's not as exciting as it used to be back in the early days of a few breweries. I think they're all trying to out outwin each other. You see, it's interesting because I was in the Nags here the other day, right, and I had a pint of um, Magic Rocks Cannonball. Yeah. Yeah, very, very good pint. And then I had another pint of uh, Saren Craft Undercurrent, another fantastic beer. Mm. I'm going, the two of them are very, very similar because they're just packed solid with hops. You know what I mean? And I'm yeah. thinking, what a lot of these breweries start, need to start doing is creating completely different stuff. Um, and, and like, I think back to when I started drinking ale. Like, I remember Courage Best Bitter, yeah, when it was nice. <laughs> now listen I think that was the, the review I f this to f that and what terrible beer it was you know what I mean I think the only courage beer which has stayed solid since the brewery disappeared was our imperial stout um, and it's like it's a, it's a it's a it's a shame like I even remember Hobgoblin not yeah, yeah. Hobgoblin beer six years ago completely different beer uh, you know, cask and bottle. It was always a pleasure to drink it. Now it's like a chore. Yeah. You know, if it's one of them beers, if it's the only thing, which is, say you, you walk into a bar and it's a shitty bar, but they've got it on tap and it's the only beer you'll think, oh, I'll drink. You'll drink it, but it's a chore to drink it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and it's like, you know, I prefer bottles anytime over a cask of it because the cask to me is very bland. I mean, that's the same thing I was mentioning earlier. I mean, um, to the guy, Perseveres, that you can walk into a pub and the majority of the time you go with what's safe. I mean, uh, there were John Smiths in one pub, uh, Tetley on another one, Obgoblin, uh, Wilmington's, what else is there that's reliable? Uh, Carlin Premier. I've never seen that. Have you not seen it? That one of Nathaniel's beers? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's another thing. I mean, all these beer bloggers are um, getting on the, the craft beer wagon, but yep. when it, it's everybody's doing it, they all try to get off and well, try to be cool by <laughs> saying, it's it's cool not to say craft beer now. Well, you see, I just turn around and say it's a lot of bollocks. I drink beer because I like beer, and I'll try anything, you know what I mean? So, you know, um, I was spoiled for choice. Um, about it's gone back about three months ago, but I've seen John Smith's on cask, never had it before, and no. I had a John Smith's on cask, and I reviewed it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it was the first beer I went for when I seen it. And other people would probably turn around and say, "Oh, you don't want to be drinking that shit." But for me, you know, you got to try it, you got to review it. 
You yeah. like, you think, like every everybody's palate is different. See when yeah. people say you, you, about craft beer, this hence my little thing. I'm off to Ireland to drink craft beer. You know, Irish craft beer. And listen, I was off to Ireland to drink whatever I wanted. You know what I mean? I mean, I loved my Ireland trip uh, last year. It, well, this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it, it passes so far. It's like, all oh, it seems the same year. But I loved it. I mean, I would pop it into different pubs. And it was just... I loved how the, there was a slow stream. Uh, there were a pub on this side and a pub on this side. And I went to that pub, and the, the reason we got to that pub over there because they had an argument with that pub over there, and that argument had a pass. And the majority of the pubs, they all drank Foster's and Carlsberg, but uh, there was one pub um, that only served bottled beer, and it, it was uh, basically this really old guy, um, and, he, and he told me a story about his collection of books and stuff like that. Really nice old guy. Um, and he had the Smithwick's, and um, what's the ice beer uh, that Guinness do? Oh. Uh, what's it called now, that ice beer? Oh. It's, a, it's like a lager. Um, it's not It's not Ark, is it? No, no, no. Harp? Anyway. Harp? Ah, that's it. Ah, Yeah. Um, that that was super solid. You did you like it? Yeah. I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but, Stuart, but Stuart, see my twin brother, right? Yeah. My twin brother Michael. He lives in he lives in Canada now, right? Yeah. And uh, he there's a, his local bar, something called Freddy Joe's or something, right? But they every week bring him or buy in um forty eight cans of harp. Yeah. So. And, you know, he absolutely loves it. I grew up on it, and to be honest, it gives me a stinking hangover. You know what I mean? Well, the thing about it is, uh, you haven't drunk uh, Alp Lager until you've drunk it with a proper old Irishman yeah. in a proper Irish pub. Yeah. In, surrounded by Irish men. Yes. Like, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. Having a pint, you know, every time I go home, I drink a few pints of it. You know what I mean? No, the thing is, uh, what I noticed a lot when I was there is no one drinks Guinness. Were, were you in, what, in, when you were in Dublin? In all of the island part I visited, no one, the, basically, the reason they don't drink it, they said, is basically it takes too long to pour and I want a beer now. <laughs> you see, yeah, see, it's interesting. It's interesting you say that, right? As an Irish man. Are you Irish? <laughs> As an Irish man, everyone drinks it. But then, you know, my first pint when I go to Dublin, I go for Beamish. Beamish Irish Stout is my drink. Beamish was awesome. Oh, listen, Beamish is better than Guinness. Definitely. Oh. I mean, I was surprised that um, it was this is so chocolatey, so full flavoured. So and so silky smooth. Yeah. Listen, Stu, I, I'm one of these ones. I could sit and drink Guinness all day, every day, and, like, skull pints and pints and pints and pints. And Claire keeps turning around and just saying, Hi, why are you not drunk? I said, because I'm a <laughs> man. And I grew up on this stuff. You know what I mean? But, yeah, Beamish is... Um, wh- what have, I've, I've been very lucky to have Beamish in a can, yeah? Well, um, I, I brought back... Because Andrew wanted to try it. It was on, on Andrew's uh, hit list. Yeah. Uh, beers to try... And I brought it back. Did you, did you bring it, back a can? Or? It is good on cask than it did as on can. Did you bring back can? Yeah. You see, it's very right. So you're lucky, right? Because um, it's very, very hard to get Beamish in cans. Well, when I was staying, they were, they were available. Yeah, uh, no, no, then it's very, very hard to get them because there's not many can version of Beamish done. Yeah. Did, didn't you try the Beamish in uh, Oak bourbon barrels? Yes. And I had I had Beamish. See, and again, where Beamish is made, right, uh, it, from the from the brewery and local pubs, they still sell it out of wooden casks on a tap. So it comes out, you know, around just under room temperature. Mm. And let me tell you, Stuart, see when you drink it, oh, it is like, it's like Christmas. 
It really is. You, you actually sit there and go... Is that the oak barrel version or yes, the it's, bourbon it's barrel? No, 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 no. I've had the bourbon barrel version, right? Which yeah. was done which was done two years ago as a special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But at the brewery, they also do, and, and surrounding pubs also do, the old oak cask yeah. versions. The wooden casks were put, put in, and you've just got the spile on the top, and you've got the tap, and it's like... Yeah, I think you know, um, Masham do the fixing so peculiar on the same oh, style. You see, and... To me, it tastes so, so much better because, you know, gravity is, is, is really pushing that out, do you know what I mean? And, you know, a lot of them ones, again, they're cast conditioned um, and they're taking the flavour from the wood and it's just giving it that extra kind of coating, really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I um, mean, uh, I was on the uh, Ale Trail, uh, went to a beer festival for the Society Preven- Prevention of Beer in the Wood. Do you do you do beer trails and ale trails? Yeah. Do you do, you do them? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, <laughs> I'm not so sure far now. Oh yeah. Um, they did um, a society of prevention of protection of beer in the wood. I don't know if you've seen it. And nope. It's, nope. It's uh, basically where a society where um, the make sure. It, Certain breweries do uh, beer in wooden barrels. Right. And they did five towns and stuff like that in wooden barrels. Oh, that's right. Monster Mash. Yeah, and Mango Junction as well. Mango. I never had that one. But uh, yeah. Dave, keep, Dave from Beer House tells me it's good. Did, didn't he save you a bottle? He, no, he saved me a bottle of... Um, he got me. He saved me a bottle of Monster Mash, which I reviewed about six weeks ago. And that is another favourite from that brewery. But I had the Mango Junction in uh, wooden barrels. No, I never had a bottle of that. No, well, in, in bottle it wouldn't have been in wooden barrels. No, 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 but that, no. Oh, you didn't have... No, no. But um, it the, would the, like... They, they did a bottle, they, yeah, they did a bottle format, but I never had that. But I know, because Dave had that uh, in his shop, didn't he? Yeah, wood, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thought, I thought you got that one. No, I never got that one. No, because that was just before I started per. Because that oh, was. Oh yeah. I started purchasing the beer from him in around June, July time, and it was just. Oh, before yeah, that. that was the time me and Derry were joking about real Kevin Flack. That often. Yeah. <laughs> we were always joking. It's like uh, Kevin Black is on saying he's going to order something from our shop. He's going to order he's, from someone from our shop. He's like, I place orders with him every two weeks. <laughs> yeah, you do now. Yeah, no, but my, my thing is what I wanted to make sure was that, um, and through obviously you and your brother, the recommendations were good beer, you know what I mean? Um, and for me, and I mean this, like I spread the word about his shop so, so much, and I think his, you know, I wouldn't buy beer from anywhere else now, apart from, there's a new beer store in Reading, so I'll buy local beer, because obviously he doesn't do... Didn't you go to the um, Beer Writers Convention? No. No, that was, la- was that last weekend? I had a t- Yeah, that's what... That's- yeah, no, I had a ticket, but it was working because I'm I'm part of the guild of beer yeah. writers, but nah, I couldn't I couldn't go. But apparently they had some real super beers on down there. Yeah, he, he, apparently you get a lot of free stuff. That's why he goes. You do. You, do, you got a, and, and a lot of the big breweries and smaller breweries. Um, like last year, um, Badger Ales brought their celebration ale, which is like fifty quid a bottle. You know what I mean? Fucking terrible, <laughs> terrible stuff. People made me buy some badges today. Uh, what? Up, up in here and. Uh... Oh, hop and hers, good. Hop and hers, good. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's just listen. Um, where I live, Stuart, right? I'm surrounded because where I live, I'm just outside of Reading, so kind of countryside, and all the bars are are run are um, Badger Brewery bubs. So you know, very very good beers. I, I like them. Like I lo- I love them in cask. I like them in bottles as well. To be fair, uh, the first beer videos I started watching was Badger Beers videos. Yeah. Have you seen their videos? No, no. What, they're from, what, from their brewery? Yeah. No, I haven't. No. The, the, they're really funny. You've got to bash it into your computer. Uh, yeah. What do you have down in Reading? Uh, iPads? Yeah, I've got an iPad, iPad. Yeah. iPad, yeah. I remember uh, my favourite beer from them, right? Going back six years ago was Poacher's Choice yeah mine was Stingo 
It was what? Was it, it Stingo? The one that they did for River Cottage? No, 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 no. Oh, yes, the... Stinger. The, the Nettle beer. Yeah, Nettle, Stinger. 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 Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good beer. I like that. But it's better I, fresh than it is yes, when it's good. Yes, and, and the thing is, I can, every spring, spring coming in the summer, I can, I drink that in cask. It's, and it's lovely, like, um, mm. bottles, it's very good too. But I always used to love Poacher's Choice. Yeah. And I now, bought a bottle today because I wanted to um, re-examine it. Yeah. Poacher's Choice was l- always a lovely beer. It's fucking yeah. terrible. Man. I wouldn't drink it. It's like... Oh, you, what were you five minutes ago when I, when I purchased it? Did you buy Poacher's Choice? Yeah. Stuart, try it again, revisit it. I found it too sweet. I think they've changed the recipe and I think they've changed the... Mm. Well, maybe not the recipe. I think they've changed the cheaper grains or hops or whatever. It's not what it used to be. Um, I mean, this is what I've been trying to tell some brother. It says uh, breweries may not say it at first, but they, they will always cut corners. Exactly. So I'll give you an example. The Blanford Flyer, yeah, yeah. Their, their ginger beer, right? That was another fantastic beer. Now I think what they use in their beer is ginger syrup, and mm. it is sickly. And listen, I mean, I've got, I've got, I've still got two bottles, yeah. And they've been in my garage for nearly two years now. And to be honest, they're going to be cracked up and put down the sink. Because <laughs> I actually, no, no. But see, when I started drinking it, I used to drink it on cask and bottle, and absolutely loved it. When I seen it, I always bought. Save it. one bottle for Andrew. What sorry? Save one bottle for Andrew. Do you have a bottle for Andrew? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I will. Listen, it's terrible stuff. No, just so we can do an aged beer review. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can listen. You'll be sick. I might need two if we do it together. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Three gingers puking up. Yeah, Best video yeah. ever. <laughs> yeah, oh, but it's it's um oh again there's there's another beer where I think they've cut corners. You know. Well, what? first time I tried Blanc for Fire, right? I found it too much ginger in my face. All that ginger, and so like. Oh. Do you know what? Do you know what it is now? Do you know what it is now? It's ginger, right? But it's like a ginger syrup. So it's yeah, no, that's like what I mean. Very sweet. The second time I had it, it, was, it wasn't as offensive of ginger. It was just so. Uh, no, no, no. Now it's ginger and sweet, and it's very sickly, and it's like, nah, you can keep that beer. Ah, yeah. so it must be another version then. Mm. But I remember having it again six, seven years ago on cask, mm. and it was it was beautiful. On bottles, it was beautiful. Claire, yeah, so got, me, Claire got me a few bottles a couple of years ago. Because she knew I like it, and I remember cracking one up and going, "Nah, this is terrible." And then that that summertime, I bought it on cask again, and I had a pint of it. I was like, "I can't drink this shit." I think the, again, I think they changed the recipe. You know what I mean? Well, save those two bottles, right? And then we'll, we'll yeah. do a age beer review, all three of us. Do you know what I've got? Do you know what I've got? What you love? Fuller's eighteen forty-five. You know they're. It's like they're. I I classify it as Christmas pudding in a in a bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I bought. Uh. The common cases of eight. I bought sixteen bottles. What? Direct, direct from the brewery. Lovely beer, right? Um. I bought them three years ago. Um. And I've got a case now. Well, there's twelve which are out of date. Yeah. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep them for. Um. I'm gonna keep them for twelve years. I'm going to have a bottle this Christmas and I'm going to have Christmas after and after and after and I'm going to review them mm. ever so. But, yeah. but again, what an absolute beer. Have you tried it before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, The local pub, Andrew Lights, going to New Inn. Yeah. Um, I think they get it on cask. I mean, the cask version is the cask version's just okay. I always find that Fuller's bottles are better than a cask beers. Hmm. And then people always go London Pride. Well, I had the Wild River twice down cask, and it'd just be like... It's, it's, yeah. Try it on bottle. Well, we've I, got a bottle. Uh, I, yeah, I've got a... I actually put, picked up a bottle for you as well. I don't know why we're reviewing it, because Andrew, Andrew chose the selection for this week. This see, see, week. see, to be honest, Stuart, right? See, is a bottle up here. It's very... It's... It's very, imagine it very, very dry hopped. You know what I mean? And it's like, um, mm. it was the it was the first beer I drank when I was off beer for 58 days, yeah? 
and you could taste, I mean, you could taste every single flavour in it. And it was nice, don't get me wrong, it quenched your thirst. It was very, very good. Um, very, very lovely beer. And then I had a bottle, uh, the same bottle, well, a bottle of Wild River the same night. And again, very, very good. So it's basically uh, the ghost ship of Fuller's. Uh, yeah, but but much happier, you know, on a completely different level. But and but it's so dry as well. Mm. It's like if you like dry hoppy beers, you know, Wild River's the beer to drink. I'm, totally I'm not I'm not too keen on really dry, dry, chewy hoppy beers. So yeah. I mean, uh, when it, biggest regrets of this year was probably the Emp Epic Brewing. Oh put. yes, I seen that big bottle you tried. How much did that cost you? Fifteen quid? Ten quid? Something like that. Uh, um, someone recommend someone from America recommended the brewery, so we, we thought we'll try it. Uh, it was the you opened it up. Go on then. You you didn't like this, did you? No, I've, I've, the problem I have with Brass Castle is all the beers taste better on cask than bottle. But uh, the message me and saying um, they're, they're having problems, but. The one I've just purchased, I don't know if you saw it, the fatty one, the, the, the wallop. Right. Uh, they unbottled that beer. And it comes with a wax seal over the, over the cap. Oh, right, okay. Uh, they were unbottled, uh, but the other ones were sent to other brewery, another brewery. Right. I think it was uh, Ambleton. Was so... That? Because this is live, I'm going to do a quick review in this in, yeah? Yeah. So, Burn Idea, uh, Bass Castle, uh, their peat smoke porter. Um, I think it's, what is it, 5.8%. 5, 5. Yeah, I've got this from Beer House. When I've seen it, it was like one of them beers. I love smoky, darky, um, especially peated beers as well. So, really looking forward to trying this. But, um, what's it called? Um, this was a collab with... York, is it? University? Yes, I think that's, yeah, yeah. So the beer itself is pouring with um, medium carbonation. It's got a two finger head, which is tightly packed bubbles. Yeah, I think it was the, is it um, York Rail Ale Society or something? It says on the front of the bottle. Make, um, uh, famous. Bass Castles. Blah, 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 blah. Check out the front bottle, front. Yes, Uni of York, really a society. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's got a nice kind of mocha kind of coloured coffee head. Edgerton's yeah. is pretty good. You get like red berries and stuff like that. Yeah, it looks good. And it's a very, very deep, very, very deep, uh, dark. Dark uh, purple, almost. Yeah. It's, um, it's very good. Actually, it's like a cola brown in colour. Yeah. On the nose, you're picking up again. Big deep raisin notes. Prunes. Prunes. There's a bit of cranberry as well. Yeah, I think I think I don't know if you've got cranberry, cranberries on ours. And then you're really picking up that uh, smoky maltiness. Mm. And also a light bit of black treacle. Okay, I'm gonna go straight in here, folks. So the first thing I'm getting is, it's actually quite sweet, and um, which it's it's uh, very much like a sweet and then kind of citrus lemon sherbet, hmm. and then you're getting the smoky maltiness uh, starting to come through. There's light chocolate notes, there's also some. Um, like a, a very milky coffee starting to develop but again there's this really strange sweetness um, and it's citrus kind of lemons there's a little bit of uh, white kind of like over sweetened white grape uh, to me this beer you know again look at that the head's disappeared I don't think this beer has uh, conditioned properly um, 
I mean, we had that problem with Axon beers. Yes. Yeah, because I had the pumpkin porter at that time. This is... They had the flavour uh, there, but it just the uh, the conditioning in the air... Uh, look at, was but look at that. Look at that. For 5.8%, right? There's mm. no hair. This actually looks like a wine. Um, and I think what has happened here is that when they have transferred this beer from primary to secondary, um, there hasn't there hasn't been enough yeast left. So when they've put actually mm. the sugar in the bottle or the prime basket, there's not enough yeast to actually... Oh, that, that explains all the no head retention. Exactly. Um, I'm very, very disappointed because to me, again, this is, this is another beer I want. I wanted to have November, December time. Yeah, I had Bad Key on um, cask, and that was really good. And that's the that's what the, this is. It's basically Bad Key that's been smoked and all that stuff. I mean, the original beer, beer was Bad Key. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, their beers are solid on on cask. It's just the balls just you, fall really short. You are getting that kind of really nice, deep, earthy um, mm. oak beechwood smokiness um, starting to develop too. You're also getting that kind of chalkiness of the yeast. But again, this beer is spoilt by this lemon citrus notes. And um, it's actually making the beer very kind of the stage where... Actually, do I want to drink the rest of it? Mm. I so, mean, um, what's that uh, beer review that's gone to work for Brass Castle? Or is working with Brass Castle or something? Uh, Bear Grilly? Or Bear, oh. Bear Grills reviews or something? Bear Girl reviews? Are you thinking of Bear Grills? <laughs> yeah, Bear Grills. No, there's a good, there's a good, what's his name? He has, he has like a bear as a, um, a theme on his thing. It's basically just... And it's like Bear Girls reviews. I can't remember his name. Um... Folks, this was a this was a beer again purchased from a beer house. Beer house. So all the beers that we've drunk, well, majority of the beers that we've drunk, purchased by a beer house. Yeah. Uh, don't hold it against him. This one, uh, this one doesn't have a price on it, but I think it was about two pound, two sixty a bottle. Um, yeah. You know, every bottle might be different again. Um, what I do want to do is I do want to try the rest of the range. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that. But to oh. be honest, I'm, I'm, I am disappointed with this because uh, I'm very big into smoked beers. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's why we bought it. Yeah. The best the best brewery and, and more local brewery where I've had smoked beers from is uh, Bingham's Brewery. And they've just um, done a wood smoked porter. Uh, very very good, and they also do a, a mild called Smiled. Um, I mean, that's sure, that sure the, you'll be able to orange uh, yes. beer festival. Um, Downton Brewery, nice. Downton Brewery, do yeah, chocolate orange. Um, but yeah, Stuart Andrew Pigard, when you're down at Reading Real Ale Cider Festival, one of the first beers I recommend you try is Bingham Brewery Smiled, and if they have got this um, wood smoke porter, another beer you want to try because it's a uh, very very good. And um, for me, to be honest, this is a this is a five out of ten, folks. A five out of ten. Um, I'm I'm disappointed. Um, but again, you can't be happy with all the beers you get. So, no. yeah. I mean, out of the beers from the bottled beers uh, rated for you so far, below average. From where? Sorry. Brass Castle. Yeah. So far, yeah. Below to be average. honest. Yeah, below average. And the thing is, is um, I've had a couple of their beers on cask at beer festivals, um, and they've been, they've been. I wouldn't say they've been solid. They've been okay, um, yeah. but their bottle range, uh, you know, I've never ever had a head on any of their beers. Um, and again, I always find their beers a little bit sweet, and I believe the reason for it is it's the con conditioning process. It's mm. either um, they're not left to uh, condition properly. In the context is in left in a warm environment to carbonate, um, and you know it's just I think a bit of work needs to go into the bottling process. Um, yeah, I mean uh, there's a term that Southerners and Northerners use for the Yorkshire folk is uh, Yorkshire uh, really good at producing good head, and that's because well, of the, the, what's that little little red thing that they put on top of uh, on the the tap on the beers. 
the sprinkler. What's it called? Oh, yeah, the sparkler. Sparkler. Uh, and that's the reason, because everywhere else, apart from Yorkshire, they use the sparkler. Yeah. But I think that's I think that's part and parcel of the water as well. Yeah. So the Yorkshire water plus, you know, weight, and, and you know, it's very, very big. You, you know, you put the weight into the beer and, you know, that or, you know that is what's going to give a beer a head. Hmm. But then it's, it's definitely down to the water quality as well. Um, I mean, uh, where this is, um, oh, I'm, I mean, uh, when you do your beers, do you use uh, mineral tablets or do you use uh, actual reading water or do you use no. mineral oh, water? So, so Stuart, um, the first beer I brewed was um, Bitter Me Plums, Blackney's Brewery, Bitter Me Plums, 5.8%. Yeah. This, this weekend, it's going into a competition um, with up against Simon Seaton's beers in. Uh, oh, nice! Yeah, so there's a competition this weekend. Uh, I can't remember the homebrew shop. I think it's called More something Moreland or yeah. whatever. Um, but the, it's uh, it's going into a competition. That was the first beer I brewed with Red and Water. Now Red and Water is very very hard and not ideal for brewing, but actually the beer turned out, um, which I think is is quite good. There's been a couple of bottles where if like it was near the end of the fermenting vessel were just maybe just over strong and the rest yeah, was, yeah. with the me was quite perfect. Had lovely bitter uh bitter notes, lovely plum notes there too. So um fingers crossed, you never know, might go well. But but from now on I've well the brews I have brewed with I've brewed with um bottled spring water. Uh, um, so that's what I've been using. Until I find premises and when I've got found premises what I'll do is I'll treat water. To uh, so I'll use red and water, but then treat it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, when I went to California and I visited some of their own brew shops, a lot of them had like mineral samples and stuff like that, and another uh, so, some like I think uh, Burton on Trent, they they basically do uh, water treating, and it's basically the make to the water goes a certain way. Yeah. Soften it and harden it and all that stuff. Well, and and that's it, you know, because I I honestly believe too, you know, especially when you're boiling it in the in the in the copper like or or in the kettles, you know, it gets to the stage where a lot of calcium will build up as well, and what that's going to do, it's that's going to alter the pH value of the beer. So um, yeah, and to me, it's at this early stage, it's trial and error too. You know, I'd say the beers I have produced, I've got five in bottle format now. I would say three of them are good. The other two are hit and miss. Um, you know, the coconut porter didn't turn out the way I wanted it to turn out. Uh. I think there was a wild yeast infection in it. Hmm. But I've bottled ten bottles. So, Stuart Andrew, I'll, try, I'll send one up to you. Try it anyway. Tell me what you think. It's got target hops in it. It is drinkable. Um, but I don't know if you want to drink the whole bottle. Is it, no, but is it, is, is it, is it now alambic? Well, actually, in saying, that, right, in saying that, so what I've done, Stuart, right? Coconut lambic. Well, it's interesting you saying that. So what I've done for, um, for should I say, quality assurance purposes, I have a, a bottle, 10 bottles, and then I keg the rest. But the one which I've kegged, I'm going to leave kegged for six months. Mm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, during this, just before the summer, or just, yeah, just before the summer, I'm going to crack it open. And hopefully because it's wild yeast, it will have that sour porter note, but then hopefully the coconut will shine through as well. well open so it. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say Andrew come visit. Sorry. Open it when me and Andrew come visit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In May time. Yeah. Let's do that then. Let's do yeah. that. Yeah. Let's do that. Sounds like an absolute plan. So my thing is, it's either going to be absolutely terrible and it needs to be thrown away, or I'm going to trump all of your cafe. Yeah. <laughs> or it's you know, or it's going to work. Um, and my thing, it's trial and error with that beer. Um, what I shouldn't have done was, I think, when I put the coconut in, um, I put it in completely raw. I, I never boiled it. So maybe that's where some type of infection... Oh, oh contamination. Yeah, but, you know, that's a, that's a learning curve. Um, but, yeah, it's just one of them things. Yeah. So, Stuart, are you going to take the plunge? Are you going to brew? The fair... I'm not interested in brewing. Andrew's got, Andrew's got an interest, hasn't he? Yeah, Andrew. Andrew really wants to do it, um, and I'm, I'll try probably try and document it if I can. 
Um, well, the thing is, my, my mind is all up place all the time, so it's like I can't focus on anything. You can't what? Focus on anything. All oh, right, okay. I'm very irrational. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, my thing as as which I said to you about a year and a half ago, my overall aim was to start brewing. Yeah, and you done it. And to and, and you know I've done it now. I've got five brews, and now all I'm doing is as soon as I get premises, that's me good to go. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, uh, when I started beer reviewing, and I got invited to all these Google Hangouts, and that's when uh, Kim Black turned up. It's basically uh, he announced he was really basically doing a book on real ale, and everybody would be like. <sighs> Kim, who's this Kim Black? Who's this Kim Black? And they'd be like, they were like, books upside down and all that stuff. Uh, and that, it's getting, got annoying. And I, I basically stopped doing that Google Plus. And I only went to an odd few after that. And now you, soon you'll have a publisher and such, won't you? Well, the f- fingers crossed, right? I'll have a publisher. I'll also have. My brewery open, which was yeah. my two main aims, which I said to you, Stuart, yeah. was the plan. Um, I am about seventy-five percent of the way there. So the book is the book is written, right? Yeah. There's a, a couple of bits that need to be tinkered in it. Um, get a publisher; they might tinker other little bits, and then it's yeah. good to go. Um, but the I mean, brewery stuff, the brewery stuff is practically nearly there. Premises sorted, and that's it. Good to go. So you know, I think. I think, to be honest, with a lot of people, it was the green-eyed monster. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, what a lot of people don't realise is a lot of things take time. Everything's not instant. Yeah, and and what a lot, what a lot of a lot of other people don't know is, you know, there were some breweries up north who were turning around and saying, "We've got funding to help you uh, release your book." Yeah. yeah. So because because obviously a lot of the breweries now when they set up they get government funding mm. as um, part of tourism. And yeah. under that is through media and stuff. And someone was like, we could help you publish your book. But actually, when I met and talked to some of these people, realistically, it wasn't viable. No. You know what I mean? Because they, they, they'd want their little... Exactly. So, you know, so... They, so they'd they'd ask for, it, uh, I mean, you've probably seen it on the, the movies and such where they'd ask for 15 pages and you bargain down to 10 pages and then you would say 12 pages. Or, and, or, they turn right, or they turn right and say... This publish was um, this book was published on behalf of this brewery. Yeah. No. And it'd be, it'd be like. Well, actually, no. no. You don't want that. No. no, I don't. And the thing is, you know, I've reviewed since then. I've reviewed over eight hundred odd beers. You know mm. what I mean? Um. Oh. Yeah. So. And the other thing with the brewery is basically what people don't realise is every brewery starts at home, and then it develops well, of in. Of course. Home. So when 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 I, so when. I, I, uh, well, it develops from home, and then it goes from home to friends, then friends and home to friends of friends. Yeah. And then um, then it goes to um, where where you want to take it from there, like a franchise. And then it goes from all that mixed all up, and then it goes from friends of friends of friends and friends, and then stranger, and then. It's, it, brewing is a, a, a massive thing. I mean, it is, you know. But what you know, for me, what the funniest thing is, some people jump in the bandwagon, yes, and they turn right and say, "You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this." I know what I got to do. It's been well, yeah. well researched. You know what I mean? Um, and yes, thank people for their input. But some people put their input in for well, stu- uh, for uh, reasons to make things difficult. What I turn right and say is, you know, I know what I need to do. Also, I work for a local authority. Yeah. yeah. So where I, where, um, uh, the easiest bit is getting, um, is getting licensed with the tax people. Yeah. The hardest bit is dealing with a local authority. I work that's, for the local. That's authority. only when you go down to selling. That's the easiest bit, Stuart. Producing. That's the easiest bit, Stuart. The hardest bit is is dealing with the local authority. I yeah. work for the local authority. I know mm. what I'm doing. Yes. Yeah. So, so when the premises are there and the premises are up and running, um, to me it'll be straightforward because I already have the briefing exactly what I need to do. 
Yes. Make sure that when the inspection happens, everything's in its place. You don't need it from someone that doesn't know. Well, it, it's not that. I welcome everyone's feedback, but at the same time, to I would turn around and say is, um, I, I'm wise, I'm educated, <laughs> and I work for and the you, local authority. And you work... And you're Irish, so you take your time. And I'm Irish, and I, I, and, uh, I like my beer, so. <laughs> but what I do want to say as well is I wish Chris from Black Tap Brewing Company oh, yes. in his new adventures as well, because just started out, you know, um, hopefully... And again, he's taking his baby steps as well. Yeah, he's with... taking baby steps in just the exact same way. I'm really looking forward to trying his morning glory beer. I said yeah. that when he's up and running, you know, um, I would buy uh, sample bottles of them. Uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to reviewing them because some of his beers sound very, very good. Uh, yeah, I mean, Nick, Nicholas Cook, Nick Cook, uh, Beer Haller Reviews. Um, he reviewed uh, some of Black Tap beers. Or, uh, what's, what's, the, what's the initial name of that brewery called? Oh, Nano Brewery. Nano Brewery. Yeah. He, he, he sampled the beers. I think um, David Dowling uh, has reviewed some of the beers. Yeah. Yes, Dave, Dave just reviewed the, I think it was the Morning Glory, actually. Yeah. Actually, that was a, that was a pretty uh, Urban Viking reviews. Um, that was <laughs> David, yeah. David Dowling. That was a, a fantastic review. Is that, the, is that the one his, where that little kid jumped out of nowhere? And the was young lad jumped over the back of him from the, yeah, on the sofa. So I mean, actually, I was... really, actually really enjoyed that review. It was quite, it was, it, it was quite good. Yeah, oh, the one did with his, his girlfriend. His missus was having a, a bit of a say, but she wouldn't come on camera. Oof. But you know, things like that. That's you know, that's how you get. Also, you get people in the beer too. You know yeah. what I mean. So seeing that kind of uh, review was actually quite nice. It was different as well. So but Dave, I'm... fair play to you if if you're watching or if you're gonna watch two hours <laughs> of madness. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, the one I, I was watching a Dave Dellin review and. Um, and I like it. Oh, look, David Dowling's back. So I clicked on the video, like I always do with David Dowling, Urban Viking. And I'm watching it, and all of a sudden, this little kid jumps out of nowhere. And I'm like, going, fuck you! <laughs> Nervous! Look, yeah. He jumped out of nowhere while we're doing yeah. the review. And I, I think David jumped a bit, but I like it. I don't know, skipped a beat. <laughs> um. And I think I, I think the slack on his video for that for that reason, because I nearly nearly saw it myself. Yeah, it was you know it was it was a good review. You know I think you know Dave is a beer reviewer. He's very very good at what he does. He's got a nice oh yeah. He's got a nice uh, mannerism about him as well. You know what I mean. Um, I hope he gets more into his stouts and porters, um, because I think you know as a Viking he needs to. Yeah, well, he's had, he's had a lot of beer sent to him from all over the world, so yeah, he's never a good. Few, I think one of his favourite beers was the Victory Storm King or something. Uh, okay. and that's that's a stout. Yeah, I think um, you know, one of my one of the best beers I've ever had was um, oh, what was the brewery called now? It was another Swedish brewery. Um, Rock. Um, it was one of their porters. Rock, Rock Porter, um, from oh, um, uh, Scottish Hills. So from who? Oh, that's, that's Rock Rock IPS, man. No, 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 no. This was. Yes, here. They they make the God, God's Lager. Oh, Nils Oscar. New Oscar, yes, Oscar Brewery. See their Rock Porter, Stuart. Let me tell you, have you tried it? I don't know. I've tried a few of their beers. Okay, I've got I've got another three or four bottles of Rock Porter. So that's another beer we'll have when he's come to Reading, yeah. And li li listen, oh, what a beer! What a beer! <sighs> you said that about all your beers. No, 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 no. <laughs> but listen, this. <laughs> this, this, this <laughs> I yeah, sure, 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 you ginger little man. Potato, potato. Potato. No, no, but um, but seriously, yeah. you know, as a porter, that's prob. You know, it'd be if someone was to turn around to me and say, All "Right, Kevin, there's only one porter you could drink for the rest of your life. What would it be? It would be that porter." Mm. Because every time I drink it, it's like it's like a new world. You know, it's it, it's so refresh. You know, it's so refreshing, but it's so different. It is a, it is outstanding. I hope I could brew a beer like that. 
<laughs> that's that's a that's a benchmark because I love my dark beers. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, majority of beers. I mean, from a purchase uh, a value because we like love our enjoyment of dark beers. I mean, um, it's one of the reasons why I've well, there's so many beer groups now. Um, I mean, which are your favourite beer groups? Sorry, say it again. What are your favourite beer groups for finding out different beers? Um. I, I like um I do like the camera group on Facebook. Yeah, but the thing about the camera beer group is no, you put a comment and then all of a sudden you've got like uh, everybody attacking it. Or yeah, everybody. yeah, which is fine. Which is fine. That doesn't bother me. That doesn't bother me. So mm. I like the camera beer group. I like um uh, I, Panagos set up was it beer? Blue Apprentice reviews. Yes. Yeah, so I post quite a bit in there. I also like the uh, YouTube beer reviews where I post my videos. Probably yeah. the best one of all is Beer uh, Drinkers United. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've got a t-shirt somewhere. What's yes. I thought I've got a t-shirt somewhere. Um, what is it? I've got a t-shirt somewhere, but... Yeah, I mean... Um, their beer group is really good because that's how I got into drinking and oh, old spot. That's what's the um, that's the name of the beer group that I started enjoying. What... Yeah, and I think oh. you know, for me, that opens your eyes to international beers too, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, and you, yeah, it's like it's like a completely you know, it opens that world. Like Tom, uh, what is it, Tom Mulvena? Tom Moverhill. Yes, Moverhill. Listen, the guy's an absolute gentleman as well, you know what I mean? Um and actually Stuart, just before Christmas, maybe tomorrow night actually, if you're out in a, or if you're about. That's yeah, my mother's brewing t shirt. Your mother's yeah, mother's brewery. Maybe actually tomorrow what we could organise is you, me and Tom do a bit of a live review. I'm in York about. tomorrow. Sorry? I'm in York tomorrow. Yeah, but are you there all day? Yeah. Oh, so you're not coming home? <laughs> Hopefully, in one piece. Can't find my t-shirt now. So actually, yeah, I might uh, send Tom a, a message and do maybe a live review with him tomorrow night. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll show you. I'll do this uh, live review thing. Yeah. You can do it yourself. I can find it. What's up with t-shirts? Yes, so I have to get myself one of them t-shirts as well. Yeah, well, uh, Tom Shipman um, said that Frankie is going to redo some. So did he? Did he send you it from the states? Uh, I visited uh, Irby Ombrew and Jill Mayfield in California. Two awesome people. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, me and Jill shared a few pizzas at the Cheese Kit Cheese Pizza Brewery. Yeah. In Riverside, um, which were a funny story, but. Uh, yeah, we went down to San Diego, and we, we picked up my sister on the way where we were studying in California at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and that, me, Jill, and Irby, uh, Ombro, uh, got a picture taken with all our Beer Drinkers United t-shirts. Should have worn it, really. Cool. I think what I might do is get the logo and then get a t-shirt printed here. Uh, it's probably easy. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, it'd be easier. It'd be, it'd be cheaper as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you don't mind, because postage as well on top of getting it printed, you know what I mean, would cost a fortune. Yeah, yeah just send Tom... Uh, send him a called? message. DM, DM, direct message. Yeah, yeah send him yeah. a message. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it'll, it'll be okay with that. Yeah. I think, you know, Stuart, especially doing these live reviews, I think we should do this more often as well. You know what I mean? You know, maybe two or three times a month. <laughs> you know, but but what we should do is what we should do is let's get the same beers. So you know if you if you know you're going to go to beer house, you know just say right th these are the beers I'm going to get. I'll get the, the exact same ones, and then we can do some. some books to do for myself. You should what? <laughs> I'm just looking at the beers I picked up today for myself. Um, if you can try and get, uh, I offered to send you some beers, but you didn't want to send me. Me send them. Um, oh, what call now? Uh, Cotton Blackout. Right, start that again. It was all a mumbo. 
shucks, Jackson. Um, see if David can pick up your a crop ton blackout from from. Because yeah. uh, I know you don't want me to send you one. Did you try dissolution IPA? No, haven't. No. See, uh, Sainsbury's today they had it in their shop. Oh, did they? So maybe yours has got it as well. I'll I'll try I'll try it tomorrow. I'll see. Um, two pound a bottle. Uh, what else did I pick up? Uh, I picked up Kelp Brewery. The Bledin. Oh, All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Porch's Choice, Scarborough Fair IPA. And... Oh, what a beer! What a beer! Do you know what? See last year's uh. Great British, uh, Sainsbury's Great British Beer Hunt. See yeah. that score before IPA? I think that should have been the winner. Well, me and brother had the actual winner. And... Mocha? Yeah. I, I don't think, no. And to be fair, I would never recommend that to anybody. No, I reviewed it and it was like, it. you could only drink one bottle, but I don't think it was the best. Score before IPA. Stuart, see Walltop Brewery. That is a not, that's a top brewery. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, I went to York Beer Festival, and I think that much was a waste of time because I'd rather have a drink in the actual pubs in York. That's why I'm going tomorrow. Yeah. Um, because every beer was soiled because it had a polycarbonate glass. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Mm. Right. Listen, I'm going to go and get another beer. Two seconds. Well, do I finish this off and just go to normal? It's up to you, yeah. Do you want to? Because I've, I've run out of beers myself. All right, cool. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Are you going to send me send me another link? Yeah? I don't know how to do it. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a Google, uh, a Google Plus if you want to do it then, yeah? <laughs> just, all right, okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>